Hi guys. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Teen Reads Out Loud. I'm Ashley, the Youth Services Librarian at Sherwood Regional Library. And today, our teen read is going to be The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Can't wait to get into this read. The Hunger Games is a dystopian novel. And basically that means a novel that's set in a very fictional but very scary future. This book is about a girl, her mother, and her sister. Seems pretty normal, right? Except for the world that this book takes place in, there's an event called The Reaping, and it happens every year where two kids are chosen from each district to represent their district in a fight to the death event called The Hunger Games. Let's get started. Just as the town clock strikes two, the mayor steps up to the podium and begins to read. It's the same story every year. He tells the history of Panem, the country that rose up out of the ashes of a place that was once called North America. He lists the disasters, the droughts, the storms, the fires, the encroaching seas that swallowed up so much of the land, the brutal war for what little sustenance remained. The result was Panem, a shining capital ringed by 13 districts, which brought peace and prosperity to its citizens. Then came the dark days, the uprising of the districts against the capital. Twelve were defeated, the 13th obliterated. The Treaty of Treason gave us the new laws to guarantee peace and, as our yearly reminder that the dark days must never be repeated, it gave us the Hunger Games. The rules of the Hunger Games are simple. In punishment for the uprising, each of the 12 districts must provide one boy and one girl, called tributes, to participate. The 24 tributes will be imprisoned in a vast outdoor arena that could hold anything from a burning desert to a frozen wasteland. Over a period of several weeks, the competitors must fight to the death. The last tribute standing wins. Taking the kids from our districts, forcing them to kill one another while we watch. This is the capital's way of reminding us how totally we are at their mercy, how little chance we would stand of surviving another rebellion. Whatever words they use, the real message is clear. Look how we take your children and sacrifice them and there's nothing you can do. If you lift a finger, we will destroy every last one of you just as we did in District 13 to make it humiliating as well as tortuous. The Capitol requires us to treat the Hunger Games as a festivity, a sporting event pitting each district against the others. The last tribute alive receives a life of ease back home and their district will be showered with prizes, largely consisting of food. All year, the Capitol will show the winning district gifts of grain and oil and even delicacies like sugar while the rest of us battle starvation. It is both a time of repentance and a time of thanks, intones the mayor. Then he reads the list of past District 12 victors. In 74 years, we have had exactly two. Only one is still alive, Hamish Abernathy, a paunchy middle-aged man who at this moment appears hollering something unintelligible, staggers onto the stage and falls into the third chair. He's drunk, very. The crowd responds with its token applause, but he's confused and tries to give Effie Trinket a big hug, which she barely manages to fend off. The mayor looks distressed. Since all of this is being televised right now, District 12 is the laughing stock of Pan Am and he knows it. He quickly tries to pull the attention back to the reaping by introducing Effie Trinket. Bright and bubbly as ever, Effie Trinket trots to the podium and gives her signature, Happy Hunger Games! And may the odds be ever in your favor. Her pink hair must be a wig because her curls have shifted slightly off center since her encounter with Hamish. She goes on a bit about what an honor it is to be here, 
although everyone knows she's just aching to get bumped up to a better district where they have proper victors, not drunks, who molest you in front of the entire nation. Through the crowd, I spot Gil looking at me with the ghost of a smile. As reapings go, this one at least has a slight entertainment factor. But suddenly, I am thinking of Gail and his 42 names in that big glass ball and how the odds are not in his favor. Not compared to a lot of the boys. And maybe he's thinking the same thing about me because his face darkens and he turns away. But there are still thousands of slips. I wish I could whisper to him. It's time for the drawing. Effie Trinket says, as she always does, ladies first, and crosses to the glass bowl with the girl's names. She reaches in, digs her hand deep into the ball, and pulls out a slip of paper. The crowd draws in a collective breath, and then you can hear a pin drop. And I'm feeling nauseous and so desperately hoping that it's not me, that it's not me, that it's not me. Effie Trinket, crosses back to the podium, smooths the slip of paper, and reads out the name in a clear voice. And it's not me. It's my sister, Primrose Everdeen. Thanks for listening to a reading of The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Just remember, if you like this book, you can check out a copy of it at any of the libraries in the Fairfax County Public Library System. 